Hi, uh, Michael. A uh, few questions Thanks, we've had regarding um, your ideas on blue sky and the coronavirus. Uh, first, um, you know, HEPA filters are they not able to catch the virus because they are just way too small. Why recommend okay. HEPA filtration? Mm, it's a good question. Um, so the actual individual viruses are very, very small. Uh, probably 10 times smaller than the size that a HEPA, that a HEPA filter could capture. Um, but that's the wrong way to think about it. The individual viruses as individual organisms, lone rangers is the way I prefer to them, um, don't really survive that way. They are ejected from an infected person, um, typically in mucus or saliva. So the the saliva that comes out as an aerosol, which are very, very small droplets are, we'll say one micron as an example, uh, they would be ejected. And within that one micron do droplet, you'd have a whole family, a whole host of these viruses suspended in that droplet. Uh, so think of it like a swimming pool for the viruses and all the viruses are in the swimming pool. If you took those viruses out, if like fish in a swimming pool, if you took the fish out of the pool, um, they wouldn't have a long survival rate because they're not that strong. So the idea of the HEPA filtration is not to capture individual viruses, but rather to capture the aerosols that they live in and are spread through. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. So how sure are you that aerosols transmit viruses? Ah, <laughs> yes, so a lot of research has now come to light where uh, certainly f with influenza, um, the type of viruses that cause chest infections, um, the common cold, these have been shown quite conclusively and there's a lot of um, information online now and in fact um, attached to this there'll be a link to such an interview uh, with a leading figure in this research that illustrate that these viruses are in fact um, transmitted and that they do exist in airborne um, aerosols and that this is a very, very effective and efficient way for a virus to go from one person to another. A person breathes out, within that breath, there are aerosols, uh, these fine droplets. These fine droplets float in the air around the person and um, are slowly dispersed in that environment around the person um, and then breathed in by the other person. And I want to give an analogy here. If you're sitting with somebody and they light a cigarette, um, the cigarette smoke is an aerosol. It's, these are fine particles. And if you're sitting a few feet away from that person and you can smell that person smoking, it could be a cigar, um, that is the transmission of an aerosol. And then at some point you will smell it and breathe it in. So now imagine, rather than the person smoking a cigar, the person is actually breathing out potentially infected aerosol. And when you smell that cigar, of course, you don't smell aerosols containing viruses. You are, in effect, breathing in. So the secondhand smoke is exactly the same mechanism that you'd get breathing in um, the air breathed out from somebody who's infected. And that's why the common cold and um, flus spread so quickly. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, no, not a problem. So how would you implement a system to control aerosols? Okay, same way you could potentially control somebody who's smoking. Um, aircraft use this. So in an aircraft, a lot of people don't know this, the air um, comes in from the top above a passenger and goes down and is taken in at, the f at, feet, at foot level. So at people's feet, there's actually a suction uh, vent so you've continuously got a flow of air, very much like a shower. When you take a shower, the water flows from the top to the bottom and drains out the bottom. It's the same with air. It would go from the top down past people and taken in at ground level. So you don't want any cross draft. You want um, top to bottom. Um, and again, it's easy to verify whether it's working. So let's just say you install a system to capture these airborne vir viruses, which you can't smell or see. You would simply have somebody light a cigar, cigarette, cigar is better, you really smell that, and then see if somebody six feet away can smell that that cigar has been lit. If you can't smell it, 
then you are getting effective protection in that air zone. And that would stop the cross contamination of somebody in the corner of the room um, lighting up a cigar and people right across the room suddenly saying, what do I smell? Well, in this case, it would be, wow, this, this coronavirus aerosol is in fact spreading right across the room. So it's easy to validate whether you've got good ventilation in the room or not. All right. Interesting. And then given your, um, your ideas on filth in the air like this for coronavirus and other airborne pollutants, um, where do you stand on hand wash and other methods currently being advised? For example, social distancing. Right. Um, I'm in favor of it. So I think the way to approach smart um, uh, social spaces is keep, keep surfaces clean. Uh, there are certain products that really do disinfect surfaces for, and they have apparently an extended um, life of keeping those surfaces sterile. Um, so keep surfaces clean, wash hands. S social distancing is important. That's for the larger droplets. If somebody sneezes or coughs, um, there are large raindrops that go around. You don't want to have those all over you. So um, social distancing so that large droplets stay off you in, in the event of somebody sneezing or coughing. And then um, air purification to stop the aerosols, the uh, cigar smell getting around the room. So three fold surfaces, wash, clean, uh, social distancing to stop you being sneezed all over. And thirdly, um, air cleaning through uh, appropriate ventilation and HEPA filtration. All right. Interesting. Perfect. Well, thank you, Michael, for your time. And uh, hope we'll talk again soon. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for the good questions.